Hey everyone, good morning. This is Harshivo Education and today we are going to talk about design patterns with Swift. So let's get right into it. Okay, so what is design pattern? So we have heard a lot about design patterns, right? That we should be using in our code. So why should we use it in our code? So as I have written over here, that there are templates. So design patterns are nothing but templates which are designed to help us, the programmers, to write code which is easy to understand and which can be reused. So it's like reusable solutions to common problem in software design. So when we talk about design pattern, we mean that we what we mean that is we should use those design pattern to somehow make to make our code easy to understand and reuse, you know. So yeah, and they also help you to create loosely coupled code so that you can change or replace component in your code without too much of hassle. So the purpose of using design pattern is first is to make your code reusable second is to make it easy to understand and third is to make it loosely coupled so that you can uh, you know replace any component without uh, you know affecting the other components so make it loosely coupled so that you can change or replace any other component and without affecting the other component so these are the main goals of design pattern and it's very important for any software developer to understand what is design pattern and to use them in your daily you know in your daily programming life okay so types of design patterns so there are like multiple design patterns and it is categorized into three types which is creational structural and behavioral so creational means uh, when so creational is about creating the objects right so what creational design patterns does is it removes the complexity involved uh, with creating the object so you know uh, our oops concepts like classes objects there are so many objects you are initiating the objects so much of these things right so what creational design pattern gives us is a simple and beautiful ways to create the objects and removes all the complexity and they try to in instantiate object in a manner suitable for a particular section so it removes the con complexity from creating the object and makes it simple and beautiful for you so that is creational design pattern and a there are multiple types in creational like singleton factory abstract factory builder prototype so the one which are uh, you know highlighted those are the one which we'll be going to talk about in this video so we won't be talking about everything because we don't use all of the design pattern in our uh, uh, coding or programs uh, the one which we use regularly we will talk about those uh, in this video so singleton and factory is something which which you will be using heavily so we'll talk about those then comes structural design pattern structural patterns are about structures so after uh, you know objects or classes are created how do you organize your uh, classes and instances uh, in uh, to form a large structure and how they are related to each other so structural design pattern aim to simplify the design by finding an easy way of realizing relationship between classes and objects so creational what it does it removes the complexity from creating the object and instantiating the object but what structure does then once you have the uh, classes and objects uh, how do you define the relationship the complex relationship right so structural design patterns makes a structural gives you a structural way of uh, defining the relationship between your classes and objects so that it uh, you know it is easier to understand for any other person who's looking to your code so uh, so yeah so structural design pattern aims to simplify the design by finding easy way of realizing relationships between classes and objects so there are multiple type of structural design pattern like decorator, adopter, uh, facade. Some people say it's facade. Some people say facade. I'll just say facade. Whatever you can say, whatever you want. Uh, then there is bridge, composite, flyweight, proxy. So many. But we will talk about about uh, decorator, adopter, and facade. 
uh then behavioral behavioral design pattern is basically the communication pattern it uh, it it tells you like it it gives you some ways to communicate between your objects so object communication classes communication how do you do that those kind of things comes into behavioral design pattern so behavioral design pattern identify common communication pattern between entities and implement these patterns so the the behavioral design, design patterns are observer and memento we will talk about observer only so there so there are three types of design pattern creational structural and observer uh, and uh, creational is about uh, removing the complexity from creating the object structural is about remove like making your code more look more structured like defining the beautiful relationship between classes and object and make making it more structured and behavior is the communication pattern which defines the communication between objects to objects or classes to classes then how how is the communication working so yeah so let's get right into it so first is singleton pattern singleton pattern ensures that only one instance exists for a given class and that's the there is a global class access point to that instance and it usually uses lo lazy loading to create the single instance when it's needed the first time okay so singleton design pattern is tells you that you should have only one instance of that given class so when you say we are, i'm going to create a singleton design pattern it means that you are going to create uh, only one instance of the class and that would be a global instance and throughout the throughout your code you can just use that instance to access any method or uh, variable of that class easily so singleton is like global access to a class uh, and its methods uh, so yeah so singleton patterns uh, is very easy to overuse so because of the ease like you can just create one uh, you know once you create a singleton access uh, like global access to the class you can use it anywhere you want with a single call it, it makes the programmer greedy and they use it they overuse it so the overuse of singleton pattern is not good so do not use it or do not overuse it so for example singletons are not appropriate if you are simply trying to pass information from one controller to another controller instead uh, consider passing models via an initializer or property so if you are trying to use singleton for passing information from one controller to another controller then you are overusing it and you should not do it you should be using like um, models you, basically you should do dependency injection and use dependency injection instead of singleton pattern uh, the more, most common reason why singletons are problematic is testing so if you have state being stored in a global object like a singleton then order of test can matter uh, order of the test can matter and it can be painful to mock them so mocking could be difficult if there is a global uh, object which is being used everywhere so testing becomes very difficult if you use singleton if you overuse singleton pattern so it just three points saying that you should not overuse singleton pattern you should use singleton pattern when it is necessary only then so here is a small example of singleton um, uh, how you write a singleton pattern so it's like uh, you have to write final in front of the class and then in that you create a shared um, you know shared variable and that should be static and then you create a uh, init function with it with a private so the shared static uh, constant approach gives other object access to the singleton object uh, library api so uh, this shared variable you see right so that is the variable through which other uh, other uh, classes will access this uh, library api and the private initializes prevent creating new instance of library api so if you do not have private init in your singleton class then it is not a singleton class because it can you know other classes can create new instance of your class and then you know the purpose is done so you should use private in it so this is singleton pattern this is the first pattern singleton pattern means only one instance of a class can be created and that is the global instance i am talking so fast i guess so okay factory pattern 
factory pattern is to create so again singleton was creational uh, uh, design pattern that is why we talked about classes you know uh, so singleton is creational and that's why we so when whenever there is creational uh, design pattern we'll be talking about objects so singleton is creational and that's why uh, we talked about object that we in singleton you'll be creating only one instance of of the class you'll be creating one object object of the class so that is singleton pattern and then factory is also creational object so what factory does is hides the creation logic uh, of an object so how you are creating the object so let's say you have many objects many classes and you're creating object of those classes so uh, that could be very complex and very complex environment uh, in code environment so uh, what factory does it it hides the creational logic of an object so factory pattern is a way to encapsulate the implementation details of creating objects which adhere adheres to a common base class or interface i cannot i can't see my okay this is my cursor i don't know why i can't see it in the zoom way so when you do this, the cursor is gone anyways. So you can just follow along. So the factory pattern is a way to encapsulate the implementation details of creating objects, which adheres to common base class or interface. So yeah, very complex language. It says that you are encapsulating, you are hiding the implementation details of how the object was created. Factory method design pattern is dedicated non-static method for hiding the creation logic of an object okay so yeah so factory pattern means you are uh, you should write a factory class so that you can the creational logic of the object is hidden from the client or whoever you are sharing your code with so over here you see there is a protocol environment uh, where identifier string then there is a class which is implementing that pro uh, protocol environment I can't, I wish I had my cursor. I don't know why it's not coming. I think I did something wrong. Anyways, the protocol environment where identifier, and then we, we have two classes, dev environment and live environment. And both those uh, classes are inheriting from the environment pro protocol. So in how, uh, environment protocol is being implemented by dev environment and live environment. And the variable name is being changed the identifier is being changed in the dev environment we are returning dev and in the live environment we are returning live so there are two classes uh, and the identifier is returning different value uh, based on uh, the class then we have environment factory over down here if you see class environment factory this is the factory class so we will write an enum e enum environment type and then case dev and live and then function our function name is create environment type so environment type is nothing but enum and then it returns environment and then we have switch condition as a you know as enum does then switch type case dot dev if it is switch type as dev then we return uh, dev environment uh, instance of dev environment and if switch type is live then we return live environment so yeah that's how that's the end of the class environment factory and then if if anyone wants to use uh, uh, live environment and dev environment instance of these classes then they can clause uh, they can call this environment factory and then they can get the uh, you know environment factory create method i think uh, the create method is missing so over here you will see uh, i have created let factory equal to environment factory and then there will be next line factory dot create and then we can pass dot dev or something like that and then it will return dev environment and if you pass uh, live then it will return a live environment so that was factory pattern now of facet pattern or facad pattern so that is structural pattern structural pattern means we are hiding the complex structural logic from client so we in the factory pattern, we were hiding the creational logic of the object. In facad pattern, facad pattern, we hide the complex structural logic from the client. So let's say your code is very very complex. You are creating, uh, you are writing code to produce car like 
uh, class engine, produce engine, then class body, produce the car body, and class accessories, produce the class accessory function produce accessory right so it is very complex but if you have a client and who wants who just want the production of the car he just want the car okay so he doesn't need to care about all these uh, you know all these functions so what you can do you can write a class production for kid and then uh, you can init instantiate so this is our uh, fake it class and this would hide the details the details of the production engine pro produce um, like the production of engine production of uh, body and production of accessories we have simple produce car uh, function in that and that will call all these functions so when client want uh, let me just okay Yes, one second. I think it's missing. So over here, uh, so when client want, um, so when client, uh, you know, want your uh, to create the car, what they just they just need to access this production for CAD, and uh, the production for CAD. With this production for CAD variable, you can just call produce car function and that's it so this is all what our client has has to do they don't need to worry about this complex logic this complex logic right uh, here we are just writing print print but it could be really complex structure which you don't want to show to your client so that's it so this is our facade class which will hide this complex logic and with this production packet class our client will just simply call this produce car and that's all so that's what uh, facade pattern does uh, yeah so the facade design pattern provides a single interface to complex subsystem instead of exposing the user the set of classes and their apis you only expo you only expose one simple unified api so that's what we did over here right and uh, the user of the api is completely unaware of the complexity that lies beneath the pattern is ideal when working with large number of classes particularly when they are complicated to use or difficult to understand so that's what i have written over here that uh, facade classes are used when you want to hide the complex subsystem the complex code which lies behind uh, all the production you just want to give them a simple uh, you know api which they can use uh, to produce what uh, like uh, to, uh, to do the final call they don't need to know the complex system so it is all so facade design pattern decouples the code that uses the system from the interface and implementation of the classes you are hiding. It also reduces dependency of outside code on the inner working of your subsystem. This is also useful if the classes under the facade are likely to change as the facade class can retain the same API while things change behind the scene. So if, uh, you know, if these uh, production engine, produce engine, produce body and produce accessory, if these changes, uh, this production facade will not be, you know, you don't have to change anything at the production facade. You don't have to worry if they are changing. And if you are, if you want to change something, like if you want to change the, uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, include uh, production body in your produce car, you want to include some other function, then you can simply do in, in it in the production packet. So this is, this is how the decoupling works. So facade pattern gives you decoupling as well. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that's facade pattern. It, what, what I said is it hides the structure, the complex structure of your code, and then just gives very, uh, you know, a simple API to your client so that they don't have to worry about the complexity. Then decorated pattern. Decorated pattern is the B is um once again yeah decorated pattern is also structure uh, design pattern and what it what we do in decorator is we add uh, behavior so uh, like if you want to add more uh, 
functionality or features to your existing class then you should be using decorative pattern so decorative pattern dynamically adds behavior and responsibility to an object without modifying its code it's an alternative to subclassing where you modify a class's behavior by wrapping it within another object so in swift there are two very common implementation of this pattern extension and delegation so uh, decorator design pattern uh, in this what we do is we dynamically add some behavior so let's say there is a class let's say ui view class in swift right so it is a predefined class by apple so what if you want to add some more feature in ui view and you want to use it through use it in your class so with the decorated pattern gives you this functionality with that you can add some more feature to ui view or any other class and then you can use it so the way swift to is is using extension so extension is very powerful mechanisms uh, you can write extension to any class and then you can add your own functionality to that uh, to that existing class without modifying that um, existing class okay and then delegation uh, delegation is other implementation of decorated design pattern delegation is mechanism in which one object acts on behalf or or in coordination with another object so uh, yeah so like you want to add more features so either you write extension or you write delegate so in uh, swift we have ui table view right so we use uh, two delegate functions um, two delegate uh, protocols actually uh, that is uh, data source and delegate so those are actually uh, decorate those are actually uh, example of decorator pattern so UI table view de delegate and UI table view data source protocol. If you remember, if you have worked with UI table view, you know. So those are the example of uh, you know delegation uh, del with delegation how you use decorated pattern. So yeah. So you can't expect UI table view to know how many rows you want to ha have in each section as these this is application specific. Therefore, the task of calculating the amount of rows of each section is passed to the data source and this allows the UI table view class to be independent of the data it displays so uh, the delegate uh, and data source of the uh, uh, you know UI table view how it works that's what I have explained over here so yeah so de decorator pattern is adding new behavior to an existing class um, and we can do that in Swift by using extension and delegation. I have given both the examples. So extension, you can write extension on an existing class. You can just uh, write the extension of the existing class and you can start adding functions and then it will be there. Delegation, you can write, uh, you know, protocols and then call those protocols into your existing class, like implementing those uh, existing protocols uh, like the methods on those uh, protocols so in UI table view we do that using uh, delegate and data source um, uh, delegates okay the next one is adopter pattern adopter pattern is about reusing so uh, so let's just about let's just talk about reuse so as I have written, reuse has always been painful and elusive. So there is always something not quite right about the old and the new. It may be physical dimension or misalignment. It may be timing or synchronization. So when you want to reuse some old code written by some other developer, then you it is always difficult because there will be some difficulty which you are not aware of like um, uh, the physical dimension or alignment of whatever so very good example of ad uh, adopter pattern is um, the iphone 7 right in iphone 7 uh, you cannot use the old headphones because uh, the jack point, uh, the round uh, old headphone will not fit in the new, uh, with the new interface of the iPhone 7. So for that, we have, uh, oh, it came back. For that, we have uh, the latest adopter example. So 
we have uh, uh, we have this adopter uh, the connect we need the connector or adopter which which has uh, the other end has the circle thing and then we you can use the old headphone so if you have seen iphone 7 uh, you cannot use the old headphones so if you want to use the old headphone with your new iphone 7 then you have to use this adopter so that you can uh, you know convert you can use that adopter and then you can use your old headphone so that is an example of an adopter so the adopter is a bridge between um, the old and the new so iphone 7 is the new interface and our headphones the old headphones with round uh, pins are the old interface how do we use that we use that we how do we use them together we use them together with an adopter in between the adopter will convert the will fit in the new interface the iphone 7 and then you can insert your old headphone in that so that is a very good example uh, so adopter is about creating an intermediary uh, abstraction that translate or maps the old component to the new system client call uh, methods on adopter objects which redirect them to into calls to the legacy component so yeah so i mean what client does it calls the method on the adopter object so adopter object is nothing but the bridge between the old and the new and then uh, you would be you would your main code would be uh, communicating with the adopter the you know the new code would be communicating with the adopter interface not with the old code so apple uses uh, protocols to implement adopter in swift so how do we do the bridging uh, between the old and new in swift is using protocols so adopter uh, pattern is used with protocol uh, in swift and uh, if you if you are familiar with protocols like ui table view delegate ui scroll view delegate and scoring and copying so all these delegates does is it uh, bridge the old code with the new code and these uh, delegate methods the protocols <coughs> are actually adopters so we have been using those but we didn't know so again one more example of the at patterns which we have been using and we didn't know that so yeah so adopter can transform one thing into another sometimes it's called wrapper because it wraps the object and provide a new interface around it okay cool so when to use adopter pattern uh, you can use adopter pattern if you want to integrate a third party library in your code but its interface doesn't match with your requirement yeah so for example you can create a wrapper around the entire sdk or backend api endpoints in order to create a common solution which can be reused so uh, again uh, so let's say you want to use a third party library uh, in your code but the thing is uh, it doesn't its interface the way they have written it the output or whatever it is it does not match with your code it does not match with your requirements so what you have to do is you have to create a adopter between that uh, like uh, for that uh, old sdk the old third party library you have to create an adopter for that and then you can use that adopter to fill the bridge between the old third party library and your code so here is an, an uh, link where you can find more details i have given it i will share this uh, document with you as well later on Oh, I lost. I lost it again. Damn it. Okay. I lost the cursor again, guys. Okay. Observer pattern. Observer pattern is the last pat design pattern we're going to talk about. And this is the behavioral design pattern, the last type of design pattern. And it defines the communication between... Uh, it is the communication pattern. Behavioral pattern is nothing but communication pattern. It uh, defines the communication between classes and objects. So in observer pattern, one object notifies other object of any state change the objects involved don't need to know about one another thus encouraging a decoupled design so the observer pattern says that whenever there is a change or uh, anything changes to one of the object notify me so there are two object and they are 
they are set to each other in such a way that if there is any change in one object then other object would be notified so this is what is observer pattern and it is set in such a way that uh, it doesn't need to know about the other object uh, which object it is talking to it just needs to know that it has been changed so if there is any state change in the other object it will get to know so the notification so observer pattern is nothing but sending a notification <coughs> The usual implementation requires that an observer registers interest to in the state of another object. When state changes, all the observing objects are notified of the change of the change. Okay. So if you want to stick to MVC concept and hint is you do want to stick to MVC concept, you need to allow a model object to communicate with the view object. Uh, so your model, uh, the database related, uh, uh, you know, models need to communicate with the view object. So how do you do it? You do it with the observer pattern uh, because there, there should not be any direct reference between them. Uh, if you do that, you lose the MAC concept itself. So that can be, so without any direct reference between model and view objects, how do you do the communication? You do it with observer pattern. So observer pattern is how two objects communicate with each other using notifications. So in Cocoa and Swift, how do we do it? We do it with notifications and key value observe, observing. So there are two ways we can do. Uh, uh, we can implement observer pattern in Swift and these are notification and key value observe, observing KVO. <clears throat> so not notification should not be confused with the push notification and local notification that is different this is uh, different this notification is like subscribe and publish model so you subscribe to any changes to an object and then when there is any change in <coughs> changes you will be sent a message that there was a change and the publisher never needs to know anything about the subscriber that who subscribed uh, to th uh, that object so notifications are heavily used by Apple, for example, when the keyboard is hidden and shown, the system sends a UI keyboard will show and UI keyboard will hide respectively when your app goes to the background, the system sends a UI application did and their background notification. So these are some of the ways where Apple uses notification uh, in um, their application. So, and it's notification center if you have heard of it you know notifications and that is what we are talking about which is being used as observer pattern kvo in kvo an object can ask to be notified of any change to a specific property either its own or other objects so and kvo is also like notification um, where you will be object or identify like notified if there is any uh, changes to a specific property Okay, so observer pattern is about the communication between different objects and how do we do it? We do it using notifications and KVO and Swift. So that was a behavioral pattern. So just of all the design patterns we talked about, the first one we talked about was singleton pattern, which was creational. Creational means we will be talking about the object and how we are creating the object. So with singleton pattern, we create only one global instance of a class uh, which will be used throughout the application and it is easy to use uh, but it can be re oh, you know if it is overused then it's not good we talked about that also so creating one global instance of a class is singleton pattern factory pattern is again creational so again we talk about the object and we are talking about hiding the creational logic of ad of objects so factory pattern uh, is writing uh, factory methods so that uh, you can hide the uh, creational logic of the object. Then Ficket pattern. Ficket pattern is structural and we talk about hiding the complex design structure and show only what is needed for the client. So here also we hide, uh, we write some kind of code, we write a Ficket classes and all methods and all so that we can hide the complex design structure and just show what is needed for the client. And then decorated pattern is again structural and in this we add new behavior or feature to an existing class without changing the existing uh, you know, class definition or modifying the existing class.
Adopter class is again structural and it is to for reusing the old classes or classes or interface by creating an adopter which is a bridge between the old and new. So adopter is uh, heavily for used for reusing the old classes and we can create an adopter uh, uh, adopter bridging class between the old and the new and it can be used for third party libraries. You can write a you know adopter wrapper to you know <clears throat> to make it uh, uh, in, in make it uh, in such a way that your new code can use it no you can use it so reuse is the main uh, uh, thing which adopter pattern uh, oh I'm tired okay so adopter pattern structure and uh, it is used to be uh, for reusing of old classes in new classes by writing in an adopter which is a bridge between new and old and observer pattern as behavioral, uh, which is for the communication between two objects. It sends notification to an object if another object changes. So it is for, so I don't know why they call it behavioral pattern. It is more like communication pattern, but maybe, I don't know. So yeah, so these are all the uh, design patterns I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. And if you like it, please subscribe and like the video and Please comment if there was anything wrong. I will, I mean, I should know if there was anything wrong. Thank you so much.